One of my kind of like latent fears, and it's always been my like latent fears, and I'm always like, it won't happen, is what happens when the main sail won't come down? And that's what just happened. We thought, okay, we'll get the main down. And then we kind of like eased off the main halyard and the main dropped about a foot and it just jammed. Oh, it's not good, is it? <laughs> it's not what you want. So anyway, we put the main back up, pulled it up, pulled it down, but it pretty dropped about a meter. Okay, let's try maybe putting some tension on the first reefing line, see if we can actually draw it down that way. And that didn't work. Eight miles out to sea, I'm like, do I really want to be getting up the mast now to try and free this? Because we can't sail into a dark anchorage with the bloody mainsail up. Anyway, went forward and just hauled and hauled, and eventually something gave, and it went came. It, it came down. Mm, that's the... And it would look as if it's the second batten car where the uh, the sail batten goes into the car. It seems to have detached. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you, and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Good morning, Ruby Roses. It is 7.18 by the ship's clock. If you watched last week's episode, you would have seen that um, we finished off with our usual serene, serene kind of coast into an anchorage. Yeah, I wish that stuff doesn't happen. What happened was the mainsail got jammed up and we have some problem with the sack of the second from the top batten car which is detached and is jamming the batten car from coming down which means that i don't want to put the main up until that's been addressed last night we dropped anchor got the boat secure i sat on the anchor watch about half an hour and then passed out for seven hours um therese tells me that there was a pretty bad thunderstorm last night um and the anchorage was super rolling yeah the, I, I, Rolly Anchorage, I don't care, I slept. Yeah, so. but, but what I would say to you is that, you know, I woke up this morning and the dinghy has about uh, eight inches of water in it. So it must have absolutely passed through the rain. This morning we are going to Langkawi town. We have to check out of Malaysia. I need to spend today looking at that baton. Um, I really do want a mainsail that works. I think this is the first kind of rainy, stormy weather that we've had. Last night it was just, uh, yeah, thunderstorm after thunderstorm as we were sailing in and also as we overnight as well woke up to you know kind of lightning and thunder and just thought to myself oh my god i hope we don't get hit by lightning and we've got a fair bit of organizing to do the boat has been kind of sluiced down from all the rain but we still have to do a lot of cleaning obviously nick's preoccupied with the batten car but very beautiful introduction to langkawi if for rolly and gray one looks absolutely lovely well, sure enough, just a couple of miles into the archipelago and the seas are flat, calm, it's like a mill pond. Yeah, and we're just coming past what looks like a shipwreck or a grounded boat, a boat that's uh, sunk. Wonder what the story is there. It looks like it's been there a while. We've decided to head into the marina. We uh, wanted to have kind of a stable place to get all the boat jobs done especially the mainsail. Um, hopefully we don't have to raise it, but if we do have to raise it, then obviously we need to be tied to a pontoon. So heading into the marina now, and we'll stay here for a couple of nights, get all our jobs done, and then crack on. So we can, so this is it. In here? Yeah, so that's right. So go very far forward if you can see coming out of it. Was it D51, Teresa? Go for 51, yes. Yeah. Rightly ahead, so sharp turn to port when you get in, over. Very sharp, right now. Just passing the 37, so we'll be about halfway down, over. Copy that. Uh, there's a light blue hold monohull with davits, so I imagine it's about there, over. Get your mic away from the wind, turn your mic away from the wind, over. I agree. Yep, it's in there and there's no one here to help us. Talk to me if you need. Okay, just tell me. I can't see. Yeah. You reverse the injuries. Okay, just reverse me in. I need to see the port side. That's unprotected, that corner. All right, Therese. I'm not happy. We're getting blown on, are we?
our Osmo cut out, unfortunately, just as things were getting exciting. Nick? As much as it seems calm in here, there's like a really strong tidal flow. Like I came in, literally lined the starboard quarter up with the opposite berth. And by the time I'd got the boat even halfway and she'd been pushed all the way across and the corners aren't protected. The um, line handlers or whoever works here, they were actually really fantastic. They knew exactly what they were doing. So that was yeah, that yeah, was yeah. good. And, and thank God for that as well, because um, it was just one of those situations where you had to get everything done very quickly. Well, third time's a charm. Yeah, yeah, third time's a charm. Yeah, it took three attempts. But you know, you just you just went out and, and lined yourself back up after every attempt, Nick. So yeah, it was fine. Seriously, of all the things we got put on the boat, the air conditioning is by far my favourite. All right, well, we've got two problems. One I think I can fix. One I'm not sure I can fix. The first is that the grub screws are backing out of the, the batten cars. They haven't been um, fed locked. Basically, I'll just show you. This is the toggle. The toggle yeah. is in here. Under here, yes? Yep. And it's held in place by this grub screw here. Is it? Ah, oh, that's the grub screw. Yeah. Okay. If the grub screw falls out, because it's not thread locked, this little toggle falls out and you can't use your batten car, which means everything jams. That's the first part of our problem. That's the minor part that we came down here with. Now I'm just going to try and put this back in. So that fixed. Okay. The other problem, which is the one I can't fix, and I need sort of sea wind about this. This part holds that this is a carbon fiber part that holds the batten pockets. Yeah. So actually it holds the battens. The batten pocket is there, the batten's there, right? Yep. One end goes to batten. Mm -hmm. In the other end, there is this. And this little ball joint yep. fits into the slider. That yep. pops in there. Yep. Problem is that this is all broken. Now, notwithstanding the fact that I cannot get these, I can't loosen these two screws. I mean, I can eventually, what I have to do is go and buy a, a small hacksaw. These are round mm -hmm. yeah. and these have been thread locked in. The Doyle must have thread locked these in, which is great. But loosening them is difficult because this just turns. Yeah. And I can't get a grip on this because it just turns all the time. So I'll have to get a small hacksaw, level that up and then get a spanner on it. And that should be okay. But the problem is, even if I get all this off, inside here is this part. And this, this sits inside here, yeah? Uh-huh, okay. So if you look at another one of these buttons, it's like literally this, it's only this bit that yeah. sticks out. Got it. And I need a new one of these. And the problem is that I don't know how to fix this. Now, I don't know why it's failed and I could use an epoxy bandage. How did it come out? It broke, love. This is, the whole thing is broken. Look, this is all... So, so it came out in in that direction. Yeah. Right. And this was this was left lying in the mast. So this carbon fiber is all fractured. I don't know. To me, it's been levered that way, but I don't know why. Yeah. I mean, look, you can see inside this hole. Yeah. Because it looks like there's a lot of wear on the outside, like here. Mm, no, I think it's exploded. Uh, I think it's just ripped away. Yeah. But um. I know, listen, I can't, I can't fix this. No. All I need to know now, and I can't get this off and swap it with another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't have a mainsail. Yeah. Yeah, because if we could move that, oh, way too zoomed in, um, and put on like the lowest most batten car, then obviously we can just sail with a reefed main, but it's like literally the second from the top. <sighs> if we take the batten out, we could probably sail without the batten. The batten car will go up and down, it's not jamming. I see. I need to talk to Seawind. Yeah. I can't do this. So uh, yesterday, Nick contacted um, the guys at Seawind and Doyle and uh, got some feedback and Mike from Seawind gave Nick a call and said, ah, oh, yes, we actually had this problem um, with hull number one as well. So I'm going to get Nick to explain what the actual problem is and why he has to go at the mast. So what happened with our batten pocket? Well, we had got on the phone to Mike at Seawind and while I thought initially that the problem was that the batten pocket broke, what transpired is that us hauling down the mainsail caused the batten pocket to break. It is a carbon fiber pocket and it's just not designed to be hauled in that direction. So the forces laterally pulled the titanium pin from the pocket and, and shattered the pocket. So what caused our problem? Well, actually what it turned out to be was that we had a screw back out of the mast track. Now that essentially meant that when the, the, the slides went up 
when the batten cars went up that one of them went all the way up we were sailing for a few days in pretty light winds and so some flapping around of the boom in the mainsail it backed a screw out just enough for that little kind of car to just jam so actually it was a screw by hauling down really hard we managed to bring the mainsail down but at the cost of destroying the batten pocket nonetheless we had another one shipped out and picked it up again so there's a little bit of a kind of like end of story that's what happened but yeah so a screw backed out now time to go up the mast get some extra thread lock into all those little places and make sure that they don't back out again oh oh, oh my ass Last night in Malaysia, we are going to have a little drink, celebratory drink, farewell drink, of course, any excuse. Join us next week where we are exploring the beautiful coast of Western Thailand. I can't wait. I actually can't wait. I'm so excited. It's going to be really nice. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. If you like this episode, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment. We love you all. There's two people coming. <laughs> yeah, Get finished quickly. <laughs> Not at all awkward or weird. Nobody saw that at all. We will see you all next week with another episode. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.